Hello, Froggy here, and today I'll be showing you how to get to Aramis using a double IRB from the Deepstone Crypt Raid. So, you may be thinking, why do we need to go through all of that trouble? Well, let me explain. You see, if you try to go to Aramis normally from patrol, you'll pretty quickly run into an annoying blue barrier that prevents progress. I don't know any way to get out of map in this area either. And from the raid, if we try to go up there, we immediately hit a blue barrier. Thus, double IRB. There's even a blue barrier going into the Lost Sector, but that won't be a problem till later. So first, we have another barrier to deal with. You could climb up that side, but we're gonna be doing some sparrow flying later, so we might as well rip that band-aid off now. Luckily, this one does not go all the way to the top, so you can go right over it. And now we need to set our ghost point in the Starian Abyss. Just go a little bit past the ship here. And anywhere around here will do. We just want to make sure we're outside of the edge of the box. So... Now that we've done that, we need to die to the load. Gerb Snail found a pretty easy way to do that using the Bunker E15 uh, Lost Sector, so we're gonna be heading there. Gotta go back over that barrier. So, because that Lost Sector is blocked, we're going to have to go out of map here in order to get into it. Just crouch through this little spot and we're going to do a small sword flyover. If you aren't careful, you can die to this load, so we're going to try hitting it uh, over here. I find that's pretty consistent. And uh, this uh, can be a little bit tricky to hit, but it's easy to retry. Gonna go backwards, jump upwards, and move forwards, and as soon as your ally kills the last ad at the beginning, you'll hit the auto res. And now we move on to the second IRB. We'll be setting our ghost just past the blue barrier in an area that is conveniently located underneath the map here. We had seen this spot for a while, but Eternity realized that it was actually past the blue barrier for Gale's Watch. Now, you may have noticed it's kind of hard to see here. If you look in the middle of the screen, you can just barely see our destination. The more reasonable approach might be to wait for the storm to die down. But if you want to do it during the storm, you definitely want to go here right away. After this, I'll be showing you the more reasonable way to do it. So at this distance, you can kind of clearly see where we're going. It is still very difficult though. You'll probably want to pulse your ghost a few times to actually see when you're up close, because it is rather hard to see anything. We're just going to be dropping down into the doorway. As soon as I can figure out where on earth that is. And anywhere on here will do. I'm just going to die. And we should respawn way back up where we started. Now, at this point, you have a choice. Either fly direct, or wait for the storm to end. I'll let you see the difference here. If you do try to brave the storm, that kind of ice-covered building is your only real landmark. We're aiming for a nice little rock that we can use as a 
safe point in case we mess up. That kind of light circle is where we're going to eventually be dropping. And here is the rock on the top screen. In the fog, I somehow managed to overshoot it, but when I got to this intangible piece of land, I knew it would be a little bit back to the left. Now, if you're coming here without the storm, it is quite reasonable to come here first and then set your ghost point. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Keep in mind that if at any point in time you die after setting your ghost point, and before dying to the load, you're going to have to set your ghost again. You can see it is much easier to see our destination. If the storm does kick back up while you're doing this, you're probably going to have to wait it out, because Finding this when you can't see anything would be quite a problem at this distance. Fun fact, the portal there is also solid and you can stand on it. But it isn't where we want to be. So once again we will land on this and you can just jump directly to the door because it can be seen. <laughs> So, now we should just respawn back up top, and it's time to enter Reese Reborn Approach. So we're going to fly above it a little bit, and drop down into the box. You'll want something to catch your fall, like a sword swing or perhaps a stasis melee. Because otherwise you might stub your toe and die as Guardians often do. Now the way that uh, I usually do this drop, I first want to make it into the spotlight area. I'm a little bit above it right now, so I just gotta find my way in. That side's where we're going to be dropping down. So we just go forwards a little bit here. We're on the inside. So... Now I'm just going to jump over the back here and drop down to this lower ground. We want to go just on the other side of this wall, so we're going to drop down and jump up. You can either sword fly or do a little small sparrow fly to get back up. Now, if you happen to die to this load, congratulations, you're done. Though, it's likely you won't, and in that case, we'll need to use this route to die to the load. Eternity did a lot of work getting this down and adding the ability to retry if you mess it up. So, a lot of thanks to him for figuring this out. You may recognize this as part of the old path to the raid. But we're going to be going a different way here. I'm going to go around here, and this is where you can hit the load and die. Now, if you aren't careful, you may do what I just did and hit the load and live. And if that happens, you'll want to fly back where you came. Definitely want to land on this, because we need to stay as high as possible. If you're too low, you'll die to the other load, and... That... would be a bit of a problem. You might have to restart or spend an additional auto res. So what you're going to actually want to do here... Ideally is a stasis melee in about this direction. You can also walk into it, but stasis melee is probably the most consistent way to do it. And now our ghost is set. The second auto res is getting to the uh, sparrow encounter area. And now we're here. Welcome to Gale's Watch. I was far enough in that I immediately hit that load, so that's kind of convenient. 
We're already past that blue barrier from before. And here we are. Just before where Aramis should be. And indeed is. So you can in fact find Aramis from the raid. And just chill here for a little bit. Maybe make a few more ice puns. Yeah, the last time we were able to glitch out here was with the Salvation Script Breach, although I never actually did that one. There's some cool stuff that you can see around here. And by cool, I mostly mean out of bounds, so... I'm gonna take a look at that before ending the video here. So I didn't notice uh, this while doing the master uh, hunt, so... I think you can go a bit further than you can in that here. Going to be climbing back on top of the previous area. It's probably like turn backs or joining allies or something that would prevent you from doing this inside of the uh, Empire hunt. So this slope right here looks very slitherable though. We weren't able to get it to work. If it, uh, if it did work for a long distance slither, it would probably be, uh, the best candidate I've seen for possibly breaking the box with slithering alone. It would be very interesting if that's possible, but would definitely require some very special terrain. You can see we hit, uh, pushbacks on each side here. So we've just got this little slice that we can explore. So let's go back and get underneath. Now, if we could get out of map here, it would be nice to know if uh, it's easy to move back and forth between the loads. So, first let's check from above. Well, it's not looking too good, but not too surprising. We are in a... Uh, kind of top of a square hallway after all, and you can rarely hit the load from above in a place like that. Looks kind of neat up there. Might have to break the box here at some point. Check this again. Luckily with Eternity here, we can have some help in spotting where exactly this load zone is. See, he's, he's heading over to it now. Since these are two private areas, there is likely a hub area, so that could also be useful. Although, I'm not quite sure how it would help for this particular area. Let's see if we can hit that load here. A little bit short on distance. Well, that basically only leaves the underside. 
Let's see what that's like. Can't do it there. I seem to have missed it there as well, but for this nice little area to look around. see any holes here. Let's head back over this way. We should be able to... Oh, there we go. We got close enough. And over there you can see the other end of the bubble for uh, teleportation. Well, you could if we didn't just hit Gale's watch. But at least that means it's pretty easy to move in between these zones outside of the map. Which is always handy. Let's get a nice look over there. It's pretty neat. Seeing the uh, other teleporter bubble locations. I think that's the one we just came from, but we have to go through the teleporter to be sure. Now, unfortunately, there is a box, so I can't just easily get into there. You'll see I'm hitting the edge of it and kind of getting pushed to the side. Alas. However, it does also mean that we can get to this side of the uh, load, and hitting loads from behind is a good way to die, so... Who knows, maybe that'll be useful for a triple IRB. Probably not. While I go off to investigate that, I'll leave you with some of my failures. Well, routing this out, I definitely tried a lot of stuff that did not quite work out. But that is the joy of exploration. Being your head against the wall until the wall gives in. Oh. <laughs> 